So, um, as we've uh, traveled across the North America, actually, over the last several weeks, commemorating the 30th anniversary of this record, which was, uh, it really was about my dreams coming true, because I've been, you know, I was 31 when this record came out, and I've been in Nashville a long time. And, um, but I, I thought it was important to, um, let everybody know about one person that was sort of at the heart of all this. And you know his name if you have paid any attention, if you had this record and you listened to it and you paid any attention to the stuff that was printed on the cover, you know the name Richard Bennett, and he is very much the, the heart of this record. Richard was a uh, guitar player in Neil Diamond's band for 17 years prior to uh, running into me and me fucking his life up. Um, he, uh, he'd been in L.A. for a long time. He'd been uh, the first call session player and playing in Neil's band. And um, I had made a couple of, uh, recorded a couple of sides with, uh, for the last gasp at my deal on Epic Records with Emery Gordy producing. And Emery, I, you know, I've kind of lost confidence in my songwriting, to tell you the truth, and I brought in some other people's songs. We recorded like a Paul Kennerly song. And, and a John Hyatt song in this last session of four songs, and, and um, I brought in some records and was just playing, um, playing in some songs. There's a little label called Rolling Rock in L.A. in the early '80s, and uh, rock rockabilly label run by a guy named Ron Weiser. And Richard Bennett, it turned out, had produced some of those records because uh, it was, uh, had a lot to do with music. He was really into Ray Campy. Uh, he produced those records, and um, he. Uh, you know, I, uh, Emery said, oh, I know that who that guitar player is. We could bring him in, he could play on your record. And uh, Emery's girlfriend and manager at the time was Mary Martin, who's sort of a legend. She was uh, started out working for Albert Grossman. She's from, from uh, Canada originally, and came down. And she is the person that, when the Barterfield band bailed out, told uh, Al Grossman, hey, I know a band. And the rest is history. She did introduce going to the band. And then she went on. To be an A&R person, and she signed in with Harris to Warner Records, and she managed Van Morrison for a time. And uh, one of my mentors, and um, but this was uh, early in that relationship, and she overheard me and Emery talking about uh, bringing Richard Bennett to play on my sessions from the other room. And she walked in, she says, Emery, isn't flying guitar players into Nashville a little bit like flying hookers into Vegas? And she would have any other guitar player except Richard Bennett. He covered up Go, Boy Getting Tough with me. This song, um, later a song called Waiting on You that was on Copperhead Road, Richard and I wrote. And uh, he played uh, a lot on this record, and all the arrangements were his because he and I did the demos together without anybody else's help. And we, we very much made Guitar Town from those demos. Uh, but there was one demo we couldn't beat, and we tried everything in the world with the band that we had. It was a great band, um, but um, we just uh, finally went back to the. It didn't. The demo didn't sound quite good enough, so we reconstructed it uh, painstakingly, and which meant that I was out in the studio like a dork with no guitar, being very uncomfortable just singing, and Richard was playing rhythm guitar, and Harry Stinson was whacking on a snare drum. That's the only drums on it, and um, then. Then, after we got a basic, then Richard went back and he played the upright bass, he played the tic-tac guitar, that thing over there, and he played the lead guitar. And so you hear a lot of Richard Bennett on this album, but you hear almost nothing but Richard Bennett on this song. And, uh, and he, uh, he uh, it's really his song I got finished.
Oh, oh, oh.